I'm doing a few interviews for my YouTube channel and uh, I'm gonna look for a couple of interesting people. I'm in Cape Town now and yeah the plan is to do interviews with uh, all kinds of different people that do different things, people I can find in Cape Town. Um, I'm having an interview with an artist also soon and like I told Leon I don't really uh, research when I go and interview people the idea is that the people who watch this video will be exploring this topic and the person I'm interviewing together. So today I'm sitting here with Leon Bakker and uh, tell me what you do. Describe yourself. <laughs> so I work with sexuality, okay? And if people, when people are looking for me, they'll probably be Googling Tantra Cape Town. Um, but I'm not really a Tantra practitioner, so I don't teach the Tantra philosophy or you know, I didn't study this whole thing out of a Tantra book, but the principles are very much the same. So it's, it's about expanding your sexuality beyond just what we would see um, in porn movies or so. If you, if you want to start integrating your spirituality with your sexuality and just go that one step further, then you'd come to me. And I, I think people get to a crossroad in their lives at some point where you want to expand your sexuality and you have a choice. You're either going to go like bondage and sodomasochism and stuff like that or swinging and, and just trying like all kinds of extreme things or watch more porn and so on. Or you're going to go the spiritual side where you start integrating your spirituality with your sexuality and it's that spiritual side that I'm working with but it's still very much grounded in the physical in the fun yummy parts of sexuality and like really enjoying it properly oh. mm. well um, we seem to we live first of all we're living in a very strange age now where um, kids can see porn every day if they want to. So it seems, I think, uh, the idea of sexuality and the openness to sexuality has changed tremendously in the last years, but we'll get to that. But it's a very primal thing and people have different ideas. So let me, so you do that type of thing. Uh, is it more to do with relationships with partners as well? Does it help? Is it like in yourself? Is it a thing more into yourself? Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely got to do the way I work. It's I work with you and your relationship with yourself. So some of the practitioners do work with relationship issues, um, your sexual shadows and what that means in your personality and some people specifically work with healing wounds but I specifically work with finding your own excellence and like a lot of women for instance can't have vaginal orgasms so I don't work with their partner to teach their partner how to give them the orgasm. I work with a woman to teach her how to start feeling her own body so that she can have her own orgasm. So yeah, it's about meeting yourself. Do you think like, maybe especially women because of how society was always structured, uh, it seems people have a lot of hang-ups about sex. Do you find that a lot? And do you obviously help overcome people about their sexual hang-ups? Yeah, I think there's a lot of shame with sexuality and maybe even shame around experiencing pleasure. And I've, 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 I've heard some of my clients say, you know, how dare I enjoy things so much if you look at this world where things are so sad and difficult and people are suffering so much, how can I then seek pleasure? But um, yeah, so I think there's a lot of shame and weirdness around sexuality and you know, like I have this knowing, <laughs> I'll call it my knowing, that this is where like God is in us, the Holy Spirit, the like life, the like life force, where life gets regenerated, our aliveness is right behind our sexuality and there's this weird block on sexuality that just prevents people from going that little bit deeper. Yes, because I would say because life is so hard you should enjoy your sexuality. I mean you should um, pop it like a bottle of champagne, uh, revel yeah. in it. I mean uh, that's what one of the things the most biggest pleasures in life is to enjoy your sexuality. A long time ago I had a ceremony like we, I did a 
uh, one of the sacred plant missions where we were free people and we were doing a, what do you call this, a, this, this cactus man. Oh, uh, the, the San Pedro. San Pedro. Yeah. And we had this, it was a very strong journey actually for San Pedro. And I remember one of the guys, one of the guys that was kind of our leader said, um, you know, and it's, it sounds, this is going to sound crazy, but it kind of makes sense if you open your mind to it. He says, uh, look in the mirror when you masturbate and love yourself. Does yeah. that make sense at all? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I mean, I find with some of my clients, when we get to this point where they start feeling their own energy inside themselves, they're like, oh my God, this is like the best thing you can ever feel inside yourself. It's just like such bliss. You can just go into this like amazing bliss state. And a lot of people do access that step, oh. that next step to excellence. Some people do. It's not everyone, but some people do during plant medicine journeys. They, they access this energy flow in their bodies. So I, I work specifically with this like <laughs> energy flow that goes through the body. Do you think maybe it's like a, like a, a kind of a s innocence that we lost, say, like we have so much hang-ups and the negative stigmas about sex. Like, like if, I, um, if I speak to a girl as a man, I have to be very careful because mm -hmm. uh, I can't make jokes uh, jokingly because it, sometimes it, it will just get a reaction. Yeah. So maybe we kind of lost the innocence of sex, uh, which is like, isn't it like kind of connected to a kind of innocence that that joy yeah and yeah and just we, we need to learn to communicate properly with one another and I think in the ideal world we, we should all be very sensual with one another I was sitting at a, a music concert the other day and people were sitting on the grass and they were watching the music and everybody was just sitting upright watching this music just sitting there and I thought what's going on it's so weird why is nobody like lying in each other's laps, just stroking one another. And, and I think young kids are still like that. They're very intimate with one another. Like it doesn't mean that like somebody wants to now yes. fuck you yeah. if they're going to touch you. And, I, and, and, and we become so careful of one another that we miss out on so much like just gentle caressing and touch and being with one another. It's just such a, like almost like a soul level of to be able to be with people like that, like in that way. Yeah, that's getting really deep, but I, but I think a lot of people are hurt, we get hurt through life, and you obviously build up these little boundaries, like, uh, and, mm. uh, and I think to be that intimate and honest with other people is scary. But for me, it's like, I'm not ashamed to say I'm a man and I like to flirt, not because I, just like you say, I want to fuck somebody. Mm. I will flirt with yeah. an old lady at 70 that's working by an acacia because we above know what's going on and we love that bit of a communication. You know, she yeah. feels good, I feel good when we walk away. It doesn't have to be this drag. It's like, it's like a spontaneous communication. I love doing that, but yeah. it, it gets misinterpreted quite often. You know? Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> I know, I've, I've also gotten into trouble just by touching people when I speak to them and they're like, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's, yeah. let's go back to the start. I want to know how you got into this. Was there a pivotal moment that you decided, okay, you're going to do this? Something that maybe out of your own past, you said, okay, I need to work on myself and then I'm going to teach other people, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Let's go there. So I'm going to tell you two stories. Okay. Like how I started doing the work and then what I'm doing now. So there's two stories, like things that are pivotal points. Okay. So I was always a very sexual person. I love sex. I used to have sex every day for a long time. Um, used to have orgasms, but they were always clitoral orgasms. So most women can have clitoral orgasms and, and we think that's just how it is. Like you make love, you have one orgasm, it's your clit <laughs> and that's it. So yeah, I was always sexual, sensual, enjoyed sex. And then at some point, like in my forties, stuff just started going difficult and I started pushing like sex away from me and I didn't want sex anymore and I remember just walking down the street one day and breathing deeply and thinking you know do I still want to be like this when I'm 65 where I'm just like, mm, mm. Mm. like I don't see myself like that and I I had this desire inside myself to I said then to fuck life, you know, to, ah, to open myself to start making love to life again. And I, I really had this idea that it's really linked to my being sexual yeah. and sensual again, and just being soft in my body, yeah. like enjoying my body. Um, and then I went on this like 
quest to heal my sexuality because I had to heal stuff. Okay. And I went to see a tantra practitioner, a guy. It was really cool. It was really interesting. And I went to some of these women's circles and I read books. And I kept thinking, I think something is supposed to happen, but I'm not sure what. There's like some awakening or, I don't know, like a kundalini, something. But I don't know what it is. But I knew that I didn't have it. Okay. Even though I was then having lots of boyfriends, having lots of sex, enjoying it, I still thought there's, there's something else that must happen. And, and I think throughout my life, this is now a long story, okay? I think throughout my life, I had been doing a lot of things for myself anyway. Like, I'm very in touch with my body, I'm a dancer, I'm a choreographer. I'm a voice movement therapy practitioner, like I studied voice movement therapies, like all. Oh. So I'm very aware of my body and that, I think that helped. And then somebody had taught me this meditation, the form, and I used to just go onto the beach every day and not really know what I was doing, but I would just do this like, oops, this like physical meditation. And the one day I did it and I wanted to get in the car and leave and something said to me, just sit down on the rock and you now I'm going to start feeling it as I sat down on the rock I just started feeling like oh bliss through my body like I was like oh my god I'm having orgasms here in my like in my body like in my chest <sighs> and as this was happening everything around me just like became more and more beautiful the little glitz glistens on the sea, the little sparkles. Oh. And then I would just feel it on my body and then the shape of the waves, like, oh, I would feel it. <sighs> the, the color of the blue sea and the blue sky and then the, the rocks, the shape of the rocks. And the more I felt it, the more beautiful everything <clears throat> became. And then like whoop, a bird would just swoop past it exactly the right time and I was like oh my god I'm having full body orgasms here on the beach and I actually got a bit embarrassed I'm like oh no this is weird and I had this feeling that if I carry on with this everything was becoming so beautiful around me that I think I'm gonna explode I can't handle so much beauty so that was my first full body orgasm and, uh, like, and uh, explain that sorry <sighs> I'm gonna explore this moment because it's a really big moment I mean that's really rare first of all <laughs> moment there's more I know where the rock is and you can email me and there'll be a price attached and I'll take you to the rock not really but uh, um, I want to know the emotion um, was it like a more a laughter or a cry or was it both you know sometimes when you get a really profound emotion you kind of feel like crying because of the profoundness that you I mean if you had to explain your emotion can you can you be more nuanced about the emotion experience there or is that if it's a shitty question we can just move on so no it's a good question so this is a good question because people ask me what is it so i call it full body orgasm like, yeah. orgasm orgasm because we always think oh that's something that happens in your genitals yeah. so that feeling that you have in your genitals where you just like you know it's like what is that emotion but then that emotion that of like this like petty mort Mm -hmm. You know, you feel that in your heart, in your arms, in your fucking toes. Oh. It's like bliss. It's just bliss. <coughs> Excuse me. It's, it's amazing. So that was the first little one that I felt. So now, I mean, I just felt it now. I, I can just evoke it anytime. I can evoke it when I eat. <laughs> <laughs> I can evoke it when I just walk on the beach or when I look at the mountain. So, so I can do like orgasmic living. But I have to like bring my focus to it. But that was the first time. So that was a little thing. And then it really came in very strongly. So are you still okay with this long story? Yeah. It's a long story. It's like an, all about me. It's always editing. <laughs> it's all about me. Yeah. So you know. <laughs> then I had this wonderful lover. So he wasn't a tantrika or anything. He was just a normal guy. But he was very kind, kind and loving and, and patient. And we used to smoke a joint 
every second weekend when my kids went to their dad. And it makes me very horny and then we just make love for like hours and hours and hours. Which is really if I blush, it's just the sun. I was walking in the sun earlier. I'm not blushing. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> so that was really good. And then the one night we were doing our thing and everything <coughs> just switched on and oh my god my kundalini energy woke up so it started in my feet and i just started feeling the inside of my feet but it felt so good and i realized i'm i'm fucking having an orgasm in my feet and it would just crawl up my leg and my calves and my knee and i was just like everywhere I would just orgasm all the time and it would literally travel through my body like a ball of like pleasure of light but it's it's like so it's not your whole body that goes it's just like this ball that just crawls around through your body and this very kind gentle lover of mine I asked him I said oh my god I'm just having orgasms all over my body it's so good I've never experienced so much bliss in my whole life and then he would just stroke along my body for hours and I would just have orgasms like every second all the time through my arms into my fingertips onto my face and he would just do this over and over and over for me because I asked him to do it and he was like he's he, I mean he really enjoyed me having so many so many orgasms so it's, it's not dependent on penetrative sex, you know, it's mm. just like, a, you can have sex with it too. Mm. Then it just enhances the whole flipping thing. <sighs> but it took me a while to then match this bliss. Okay, wait, I must go back a bit. So he used to do this for me. And I think by doing this over and over and over and me just moving this bliss through my body all the time, it cleared my chakras. It cleared all these channels. And eventually this, this energy, which is actually my energy, started racing through my body like <laughs> like a snake. Like, like water. And it, it would just take over. It would just take its own course almost. So like it's like it's an entity almost. Yeah. But the entity is you. Yeah. It's yourself. It's your own energy. So it's not scary, it's not dangerous. Um, like some people say, oh, yes. Kundalini awakening is dangerous. And that's what I actually help people with because it's been, you try to clamp it down that it hurts you. You must yeah. just learn to let it flow. And then something else also happened, which was a very biggie for me, and this is now very personal. So with, no, this is like super personal. <laughs> You seem to be very open. I think that goes with any line of what you're doing. You know? so, so I wasn't working in sexuality then. You know, I was doing voice movement therapy. So, you know, and I was like, oh, I don't know. Um, but, okay, so uh, then a few weeks later, so after this energy had woken up in my body, then, um, a few weeks later, I was then working at integrating this with actually having penetrative sex. Because there's still in the mind this old pattern of the way we used to have sex. We used to sort of jam the genitals together until you have an orgasm. And then I used to still do that and then separately move this energy through my body. And it, it really, I, I had to figure out how I'm going to merge the two. And then when I start merging the two, it's like amazing, really good. But it took some practice. Um, and then one night, the big, big thing that happened to me was my vagina woke up and I was like, I am 49 years old and this is something I did not know about my body. I had read thick books about the vagina. I had done women's courses, everything. Everything's focused on the outside of the, of the genitals and the clit and the little lips and, 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 and how, hot, how hotful, how tired we are of the guys and we don't want them anymore. It's like, oh. But yeah, the inside of my vagina flipping woke up. So when I say, you know, I can just have orgasms everywhere, like literally on my arm, that started happening inside my vagina. So what 
what happened to my vagina is like this thing where I can just have orgasms anywhere, everywhere in my, in my body, like even in my arm. That same aliveness entered the inside of my vagina and she became so orgasmic. She could, I, it almost felt to me like she had eyes and she could see that penis and she could feel everything. And what she started doing is she started working back. She started like grabbing onto him, stroking him, like squeezing him. And she would just orgasm all the time, but she's like super powerful in her muscles. And she can like navigate her sexual interaction. She's, and, and actually like it blew my mind so much that at first I thought, I've been possessed by something because suddenly my pussy is like moving and she's having orgasms all the time and I thought I was possessed by something but then after a while I realized I had come back into myself and I had this deep realization that I had left generations ago oh, I was going to cry when I say that and I think so many women have that I would say 95% of women have that so I'm walking around talking to women saying, listen, listen lady, can your pussy move? Can, can you feel inside your pussy? Can, can she like interact with her lover? And most people just have this like blank look on their face that they don't even know what I'm talking about. And very few women, when I speak to them about it, there's this recognition in their eyes and I can see they know they can feel it and they are orgasmic in their vaginas and it was a very emotional thing for me because it's like the most in intimate part of myself and i realized that i'd have i have had what i would call successful sex for my whole life up until that point and i didn't realize how much i was actually missing out on mm that I could be so orgasmic and so present and so meet my lover and so be with him when he enters me. It's like mind blowing. And in that moment, my whole victimhood, my, my hurt, my stuff that went wrong, was just like healed. It was gone. Because I was like, oh, I'm in my power. And it's so physical. And this is what then, and it took me some time because at first I was quite nervous to speak to people about it. Because I, I actually thought I was going to be prosecuted oh. for saying this. Like, how can you say this? I don't know why I thought I was I can be prosecuted for saying this. Because it's almost like women can be that fabulous. <sighs> like, no, that's impossible. Oh. That, that's what I, I, don't know, I thought I would be punished. And some women actually said to me... Um, don't tell other women. And I don't know why. Oh. So I'm still figuring out how to tell women because it's like a difficult topic. I don't want people to feel inadequate or oh. like they're not good enough. But I, what I want to say to women is, listen, there's more. But that's another thing. I'm going to bring something in here as well on that topic. And I'm not, I don't want to be controversial. I just want to talk about something that's really valid at this stage in, in the world. But the thing about that also is I think in a lot of ways, people are afraid of their own freedom. Um, it's a scary thing because you have to let go of all that other stuff that's clinging to you. And you have to say, man, I don't need this anymore. And it's a, it's a profound moment and it scares people. But yeah. I, it probably should be like that. It probably shouldn't come easy because the only way you can get to the, that point is you have to work through shit. You know? And that is, that is your release if you work through your, the stuff you need to work through. But other thing is like, yeah. you know, oh, maybe no, not. I actually so, want to say something about, no? about that. So. What I do see is happening is a lot of people get fixated on their wounds. I mean, mm. I know, I, I have been there myself, you know, where you're working on your wounds and you want to heal them. And then you almost start identifying with them. It's what Eckhart Tolle calls your pain body. You know, it oh, becomes yeah. such a part of your personality that we, you want to heal it, but it's really your, like who you are. But to at some point, like acknowledge those wounds, yeah. but realize that the wounds are there as pointers as your healing is right, lying right behind that to claim yourself back, claim your pleasure, like you mm. say, claim your life, claim your enjoyment. Do you think some of that has got to do with self-forgiveness? 
I went through a long stage in my life where I was totally all the time living in a pain body and I needed to give my, forgive myself a lot of things and then I could release the pain body kind of. I said, okay, listen man, you've been through this now, you can let it go now, you know. So that for me it was a process of self-forgiving. Yeah. Does it resonate at all with you? Yeah, it resonates with me, thank you. So, so, so now that this energy is alive, when you say things like that, I feel it going through my body. So I feel that you're speaking truth when you say that, because I feel... Oh. Um, yeah. Okay, then another thing is like, uh, we'll get to the really deep thing right at the end, which I've always been thinking about. But uh, for me, personally, I can only speak to myself and I'm not trying to be controversial. For me, the pleasure of the sexual um, energy is the polar opposite that attract each other. I love that. And it's like, I've just heard a statistic, statistic in a podcast yesterday mm -hmm. about there's a big upsurge of young men that are virgins. Yeah. Because we're living in an age where the polar opposites of sexuality is totally played down. Uh, we all just, uh, there's not many, nobody is a man or a woman, you just identify mm -hmm. with something. And for me, that, it's, that's a bit strange. If I look at the universe, I see opposites attract and, and pull each other in different ways, and that's how the universe kind of works. And then a lot of people is going to hate what I'm saying now, because now it's like we're all the same. There's just one. Can you, is there anything you would like to elaborate on that? Yeah. So I can come from a religious point, like one idea that I have about the masculine and feminine. So I, but, but, but on another level, like politically, like I really believe the masculine is in super crisis. Men are in an absolute crisis. They're just being told they're horrible all the time and yeah. there's this whole rape problem and, and you know men are just being bashed all over the place so so they're not they're not being welcomed in their like fullness as as men and and we actually want that and part that part of what I teach to women is like okay if we have to come back to our bodies and I mean we all interact sexually it's, it's such an intimate close cellular way of interacting with one another and it's so in your body but as long as we are angry with me and somebody says penis and everybody goes oh, you know what is that reaction what is that so now you're gonna go and make love to a man and you've got this like oh, attitude about the penis that is not going to empower you but by really looking men in the eye bringing love to them, expecting the best from them, really meeting them on a physical level, on an emotional level with love, then our sexuality is also going to wake up. Because if we love the men that enter us, we want to be present. So, so some women think, I jump into my sexual power by saying, I'm angry at men. Mm. No, you're disempowering yourself even more sexually. No, you're disempowering everything, no, everybody, the, the whole everyone. union. Yeah. yeah, everyone. So I'm just working from the, from the feminine side that I know if I want to be in my full sexual blossoming, whatever is entering me, I have to have so much love and respect. So if I'm going to be, if I am the goddess, hmm. an amazing divine being will be entering me. And I will only allow someone to enter me when I can see them as a divine being. Oh. So I need to look at how do I see this person that's making love to me. So, yeah. so, for, so for people to really meet one another on a deep physical level, like on the, the, the space where we make love, to really make love, to really become alive for one another and have a deep respect and feeling for one another. And it's going to take time for every single person to heal. Do you think victimhood has got something to do with that idea that I'm a victim? So if you're a victim, I mean if you're in a relationship and one is a victim and one is a dominator, there's no equality, it doesn't, you know, that's like, could that be part of it, like a victim mentality? I'm just shooting yeah, from the hip here. I'm, I'm just going to feel into that, what you're asking, a victim mentality. So maybe yeah. like, uh, like women over the ages has learned to date a weaker, Physically, and you know, a couple of hundred years ago, um, people, I think people in a wood store clapped other people over the head and raped them, and that was like yeah. society's normality. Yeah. And maybe that is also a generational thing that they kind of accepted victimhood. And then this whole idea of inequality 
I'm going, this is off the ball now, yeah? Yeah, this is a, it is a bit off the ball, so I'm going to bring it back to this physical thing of being awake in your sexuality. So if you can't feel, and you feel like as a woman, like you're a hollow cave, and this guy is just going to enter you, and you're going to hope he's going to give you an orgasm, you know, you're in a very passive state. You're just receiving something, and you're not really empowered. But when you step into your power and you start moving your body and you start meeting your partner and you start making love back to them, exactly. you get a tremendous amount of power back because you realize that you actually, that you can participate in your love making. You don't have, just have to accept anything that comes at, uh, comes at you. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so I think maybe in some instances it's portrayed that a woman just lies back and the guy just like goes. <laughs> well, yeah, you <laughs> see that all around you. And if, uh, but the other thing is just also like, uh, um, I kind of like the polar dynamics in everything. For me that's interesting, I don't think it's bad. So if you, like my best friends, I also re really had good big fights with them. Then we make up and then we're really good friends. Yeah. So I think like in a way, uh, maybe males and females are enemies, but they're also lovers. So there's that, there's a warrior dynamic. I want an equal warrior to oppose me in this battle of this universal battle. Mm. I'm going to go really deep. That's why I like the idea of art. So let's say we are all still an evolving piece of art. Mm. The Big Bang was the first stroke. And then it was all very raw and violent. And now it's simmering up. And it's also this part of sexuality, it's the same thing, we are more sophisticated now. The universe has, has become more intelligent, it's a more intelligent universe now. But that was the cre first creative stroke, was this bang. Okay? Mm. I call the Big Bang. You know? mm. So that is like a sexual energy. Maybe that is the primal first sexual bang, so to speak, metaphorically. Oh, yeah. And that energy is still carrying on, because creative, for me, creativity is a sexual energy. So we're still yeah. working shit out in this universe. Maybe there are, I'm going totally crazy here now, but fuck. Maybe there are other universes that are much more mature than our universe. You know? But we are like caught all in the same... In these polarities. Yeah, so I have this theory about the Garden of Eden. Mm. Okay, but this is not just my theory. So it works like this. So I grew up as a Christian and I learned about, you know, the seven day creation. And then in the beginning, God made man. Like a human being in the image of God. It's like. Okay, everything is basically God, but, you know, in the image <laughs> of God, there was one. And, and, then, and then this one person looked around at all the animals and they were like fucking and having fun and doing all kinds of interesting things. And then this, and, and they were masculine and feminine, I mean, male and female. And then this one image of God, man, said to God, hey, yeah, that looks like fun. I'd, I'd also like to try that out. <laughs> And God said, okay, and then take, they took the rib out, and then the masculine and feminine split. And I think that's sort of the same time they all just collapsed out of this paradise, and this polarity started pulling at one another. And, and I feel when you make love properly, and you bring these polarities together, it's like you merge this image of God back momentarily, oh. and that's why you experience all this bliss. And maybe the sun is a billions of years orgasm, in that sense. Yeah. It's all relative, you know. Yeah. But the sun wasn't always the sun, it was something else, then it became the sun. And now yeah. it's having an orgasm, we're all basking in the sun's orgasm. I like to yeah. go pretty well. Oh, that's a nice way to see it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And wow. one day maybe we will be suns, I don't know. So what I'm busy with now is, so I had this fantastic sexual awakening that was in 2018. I was 49 years old and since then I've been making love a lot and I've had fantastic lovers where I'm always moving the sexual energy and it's very revitalizing and I love it and my work is very focused on like sexuality and physicality and so on but um but I love the energy work I love helping people to awaken their kundalini that's the focus of what I want to do or, or what I do with my clients is to help them to have full body orgasms and then I created a course which is all about full body orgasms but it's coming in from the sexuality side so now I have broken up with this fantastic lover of mine so now I'm sitting here solo I'm like oh my god what am I going to do I'm a sexuality coach now I'm not having sex and it forced me like over this weekend I was like 
oh, I'm feeling so frustrated. I can't move this energy through my body. And it forced me to get up and to start moving again and to start exploring how do I access this energy on my own? And how do I cook it up on my own? Because I always actually teach my clients that they have to be able to access it in themselves. If you want to have the most mind-blowing orgasm of your life, whether you're a man or a woman, you have to learn to do it for yourself. Your partner can just be there to do it with you. But yeah. it's something that you know how to do. So now, this has now driven me to, which is wonderful, it's a wonderful gift, to go to the solo practice. And I'm developing like a whole thing now of teaching people physically, just first lying on the yoga mat, the breathing techniques, the visualization, then getting out, moving a bit, getting your kundalini energy going, until you can move around here in my lounge and just have full body orgasm. So I'm now developing a course to teach people that slowly, step by step by step. And this is for men and women. Uh, your yeah. clients, is it like, mostly men, mostly women, or is it like mix? Mostly men. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. But because I'm not general, well, I know a lot of ladies that really struggle to reach to a point of orgasm. So I would think like more ladies would be interested to learn to get to this place. Yeah. No, I do have female clients as well. But you know, most of my clients, I mean, a, a lot of the women will go to a male practitioner because they get a lot of healing from a safe tantra practitioner yes. going through the motions with them. You know, it, it's maybe it might be difficult for a woman to go into her sexual body with me as a woman, but it might be easier for, as a man, and where some pe uh, women might feel safer with me as a woman. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I think I'm going to end it there because I still have another video to go and do. Okay. If that's okay with you. That's perfect. So, um, how do people get all of you and what you do? Okay, so you can Google me on YouTube, Leon Bakker, L-E-A-N-B-A-K-K-E-R. Lots of talks on YouTube. And then I have a website, ConsciousSexuality.net. Cool. Uh, my channel is still very small and I don't get that many views, but I love doing this. I think this was amazing. Thank you for doing this with me. Mm -hmm. I will put, put all that details in the description uh, of my channel and please like my channel. And if you think this message about what we talked about should be added by other people, share the link. Cool. Great. All right. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> sure.